morning everybody thank you so much to our previous speakers um we have a pre-recorded session that's going to start now and um it's called lift wing wmf's machine learning model serving infrastructure so we're going to play the pre-record right now Hello and welcome to this session. Today we're going to be talking about LiftWing. LiftWing is Wikimedia Foundation's machine learning model serving infrastructure. This presentation is brought to you by the machine learning team from the Wikimedia Foundation. Let's take a look at what we're going to be discussing about today. First of all, we we'll go through a brief introduction. Then we're going to be mentioning what is a machine learning model and what does it mean to take a model into production. Then we're going to be mentioning uh, ORIS and the usage of machine learning at the Wikimedia Foundation until now. And then we're going to take a deep dive into LiftWing, which is the platform that is the main subject of today. And how does a model get served uh, through this infrastructure? Finally, we'll be mentioning some future work uh, that is going to be done around LiftWing. This uh, is the Foundation's machine learning team. It consists of uh, Chris, who is the manager and the director of machine learning at the Foundation, Luca and Tobias, uh, who are our site reliability engineers, and me, uh, Ilias, uh, Aiko, and Kevin, uh, who are the machine learning engineers of the team. Now, we're talking usually about machine learning models, and let's take a look at what actually is uh, a machine learning model. So when we're talking about deploying, we usually mean about a, a trained model. So usually a model would uh, be used to, uh, to solve a specific use case. Now, so let's take a look at an example. So here, given an article revision, we want to predict how likely it is that it's an act of vandalism. A, a model that will solve this task is basically a function that takes the article revision as input and outputs the probability of the revision to be vandalous. So when we're talking about the trained model, we are referring to this function. What we want to do with the trained model is that we, wanna, uh, we want to save it, to store it on disk, uh, in a way that it can be reused. Storing a model means that we need, we want to store uh, the model weights, biases, and parameters so we can then reuse them in our infrastructure. And then when we're talking about model deployment and taking a model into production, we mean getting this serialized version of the model from a development environment, which could be a Jupyter notebook, for example, as we can see here on the left, and taking taking it to an infrastructure that's um, more production ready. For example, the Kubernetes cluster. That would mean that this new environment now is reliable and scalable. It has monitoring and alerting. And on top of that, we may wrap our model around uh, an API allowing uh, its usage. Machine learning has a long history in uh, wiki projects, and the most uh, famous example is the usage of ORES. ORES is the scoring platform that has been around for many years, uh, and it's being used, its most famous usage is on the recent changes uh, page of Wikipedia, where it is used to help patrollers uh, fight vandalism by detecting and removing uh, vandalous edits. Every revision is flagged by ORES, and then by using the filters, uh, the patrollers can select uh, specific revisions. 
As we mentioned, Oris has been around for many years and it's used uh, widely in uh, wiki projects. It's uh, Oris focuses in the area of edit quality and article quality. It has a custom model server written in Python and it's exposed via its API, uh, which is available in ors.wikimedia.org. On the other hand, what we're uh, introducing, Liftwing, uh, is, uh, is a platform built uh, to have a generic usage. It's based on Kubernetes and it has a standard API that can serve multiple uh, model server implementation. Um, the community can propose models that will be wrapped around an API and also users can replicate and try out model servers locally. Now let's take a look at a high level overview of Liftwing. Liftwing consists of a Kubernetes cluster where KServe is deployed. KServe is a standard model inference platform on Kubernetes built for highly scalable use cases. KServe is an open source project. It used to be part of the Kubeflow uh, ecosystem, but is now graduated uh, on and is a standalone open source project. Along with the cluster, we have the model cards. Model cards are model documentation and an essential part of our effort to apply ethical machine learning as they introduce transparency and community model governance. Finally, Liftwing is connecting to WMF's API gateway which is the way that the model servers are exposed to the outside world. All right, thanks, Ilias. We are going to be delving into um, the Liftwing infrastructure. As Ilias mentioned, uh, Liftwing is uh, the foundation's new machine learning uh, serving, model serving infrastructure. And uh, it is a multi-year effort to modernize uh, Wikimedia's machine learning systems and processes to enable rapid and safe deployment of a wide variety of models. Next slide, please. Um, as Elias mentioned, uh, we use model cards, and these are basically documentation. Once a uh, user has created a model, uh, they write documentation about the model, and uh, this documentation answers questions like who the model creator is, what the, motiv the motivation behind creating this model was, uh, the ethical considerations that were taken, um, the data that was used to train these models, uh, the model architecture, the open source licenses. We mainly use open source licenses because our models have to be open source. And then um, where the model is used currently, like which wikis are using the models. Also, um, which wikis shouldn't choose the models, say if a model is mainly trained for the English language, uh, it may not uh, serve the Swahili community. So it may not be used on the Swahili wikis. Next slide, please. So once the model has been created, uh, we've made the model card for it. Um, we store the model in uh, Swift. Swift is an open source object store that is widely used across uh, the foundation. Uh, it is better than Git LFS, which is what Ores was using previously. Next slide, please. So once uh, created the model, created its documentation, safety it on Swift, then we go ahead and create a model server. And uh, this model server is essentially uh, created using Python and uh, KSAF. So we create a KSAF inference service and wrap it into a Docker image. And that Docker image is essentially the model server. Next slide, please. So once uh, we've created the model server, we send it to the pipeline. How we do that? Uh, we use Blabber, which is an internal foundation tool. And uh, we use Blabber to build the configurations uh, of the previously created Docker image. And then, um, 
we run this blabber file or this Docker image through uh, the continuous integration pipeline. And for this, we use Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins is an open source automation server. And that's essentially how our CI uh, is set up in the foundation. Next slide, please. Then we go ahead to, <coughs> once uh, the model server has gone through the CI, it is uh, stored on the Wikimedia Docker registry. And um, the Docker registry is, uh, is public and any user from the community can download uh, these model servers and run them on their machines locally to test how the models are working and be able to propose changes on them. Next slide, please. Now, uh, once the model servers are on the Docker registry, uh, we use Helm uh, to configure how these uh, model server images are deployed on Kubernetes. Next slide, please. So we use Kubernetes to orchestrate the running of the model servers. So they've been downloaded by Helm and deployed onto Kubernetes. Now, Kubernetes is used to um, either set the model servers up or put them down or manage uh, the compute resources. And this is done for both uh, model servers in staging and those that are in production. Next slide, please. So once uh, model servers are running on Kubernetes, uh, end users can query the models through the API gateway. And uh, we use an internal end API endpoint uh, for staging. And we also have an external API endpoint for production. Uh, both can be accessed through the API gateway. Next slide, please. So we mentioned previously uh, model cards, but now let's take a look at an example of such a card. So as we mentioned, model cards are the documentation of the models that allow transparency, uh, visibility, and governance from the community. So in this example, we have the language agnostic revert risk model. Every model card starts with a description. This description states what the model is supposed to do. So what problem is it solving? So in this example, uh, this, uh, this model, it identifies revisions that need to be patrolled. So its goal is to detect revisions that are likely to be reverted. In the next section, we have users and uses of the model. So here in this section, usually it's stated uh, exactly for which cases this model can be used for. So for example, this uh, model can automatically find revisions that require patrolling. It, it is used for vandalism detection and it can be used to create bots for assisting admins and patrollers. What it shouldn't be used for is for auto-removing edits that users make without having an editor in the loop. Or it shouldn't be used as uh, ground truth to use the model's outputs uh, as a ground truth for training another model. And in every model card, we also have the section with the current uses where there, over there, the, the use cases and the products that are, uh, it currently uh, supports uh, are stated. A really important section is the one that we see on the bottom, ethical considerations, caveats, and recommendations. So in this part, we, we may always see um, about specific uh, biases or characteristics that may uh, raise some concern about uh, the model that the users should be aware of. The next section is uh, about the description of the model uh, of more technical things. So a really good, uh, a really important thing are the features that the model has been uh, 
that the features have been used to train the model. So in this example, we have article features and user features, and they are uh, the users can find the the specific features of each entity that have been used while training. In the next section, we have a description about uh, performance metrics and the implementation of the model. For example, this uh, model, it has been um, built uh, using uh, Exibus library, and there's also a link to the code used uh, for training, so someone can go and audit the training procedure. Uh, also, we have the output schema and an example input and output uh, of the model. Finally, uh, in every model card, we have a section about the data that were being uh, that were used while training. So, in this case, we can see what are the what is the data snapshot that was used for training and how it was broken up during the training process into uh, the training and test data to be used for evaluation. Um, and on the bottom, we have the license that ships with the model. For example, this model comes with an Apache 2 license. Finally, uh, we, we have future work that I would like to mention that plan to do around LiftWing. One uh, big area of work is uh, hosting uh, large language models on LiftWing. Uh, most of uh, the people will have heard about large language models, uh, which have been uh, um, really popular over the last year. The difference between traditional machine learning models uh, for us, for hosting them, uh, is mostly mostly have to do with uh, the, the model size. So the, the serialized version of the model extends to several gigabytes, which in addition require the usage of uh, uh, GPUs in order to have a fast uh, inference service. And also on top of that, the, we plan to do work around having easily accessible data for our model servers, uh, which will make uh, the models more easily accessible. And this work could, um, could be around using a feature store. Please uh, feel free to try LiftWing uh, by running uh, this command, for example. You can find more commands in the first link. Uh, in the API docs, um, and uh, also you can visit Liftwing's uh, documentation page on Wikitech. We'd like to thank you very much for uh, uh, taking part in this presentation, and um, feel free to reach us about anything. Uh, you can reach us uh, with uh, these three preferred ways, either via email on ML at wikimedia.org or uh, you can open a task on our fabricator board have a discussion over there and always you can reach us uh, on irc in the wikimedia ml channel thank you very much